Hi guys, it's Kat! Today, I'm going to show you how I customized this Parisian dollhouse kit from Gearbest.com. I changed the layout quite a bit, but kept it in the same classic style. This was such a fun project and took me about two weeks to complete. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. First, let me unbox this kit and show you what we're working with. There are two large Ziploc bags that we'll dig into in just a bit. Then there's this package music box. All these MDF panels that make up the structure of the dollhouse and this paperwork that contains the instruction booklet and printed color images. As you can see, the instruction booklet is beautifully printed in color but it's not in English so make sure to use my Google Translate app trick to get around that. The image template is also printed in color and contains wallpaper, accessories, templates, and the foundation. The first Ziploc bag contains even more bags inside of it and they hold little wooden pieces that form the furniture windows, doors, and fencing. The second Ziploc bag contains fabric, paper, greenery for the garden, pieces for the pool and lawn, a lighting kit, wires, and beads. Here are all the panels that come with the kit. It includes the foundation, the walls, and the roof. Let's work on the big foundation piece first. The kit provides this template which shows a brick road, gravel, and a pool. However, we're going to create our own. Before we do that though, let's put up some walls. These three panels make up the structure of the house and the kit gives you this beautiful wallpaper to glue on. But I'm just going to paint the walls a light cream color. As usual, I'm using ordinary wood glue as my adhesive. Put the back wall up on the right side, then put up the left wall. This last wall is meant to go on the right side closing the dollhouse, but I'm going to move it all the way to the left to get more interior space. This last wall will be our front entryway, so we need to make that bottom cutout a door. Draw lines all the way down the window and then use a miter handsaw to cut off the excess wood. Go slow here for a clean cut, then just remove the excess wood. Glue the wall in place. The kit gives you this rectangular MDF panel to be the floor of the living room, but I'm going to use it as the wall for our garden. First, paint one side of it white for a nice clean look. Glue it to the foundation on the back left side. Turn the house around and paint the bare side of it to match the rest of the dollhouse. I just mix some cream and gray paint to get this color. To close off the interior from the exterior, I need another panel. For that, I'll be using these wooden slats. These are 2 and 3 fourths of an inch wide. I cut it down for a length of 5 and a half inches. Just cut the wood on both sides with my knife and snap the excess wood off. I paint one side a cream color to match the interior walls and paint the other side to match the exterior walls. Slip that into place with the cream side facing inward. Next, let's work on the flooring. I grab some coffee stirrers and cut out a bunch of 1 inch segments. For installation, draw a line straight down in the direction you want your flooring to face. Then glue the wooden segments on a 90 degree angle. You can watch this entire process in detail in my herringbone floor video. This process takes quite a while, but it's very therapeutic and the results are so worth it. Cut off any excess wood. Then I use thicker coffee stirrers to clean up all the rough edges. Lastly, I see all the flooring with polyacrylic varnish. For some simple baseboards, I paint some coffee stirrers white and glue them to each corner. Let's work on the doors and windows next. Here are all the Ziploc bags with wooden pieces. We just need the biggest bag for now. Spill out all the contents and pull out the thin brown rectangles. I grab a sheet of plastic packaging and glue these rectangles right on top of it. When I'm gluing plastic pieces, I always use Gemtac glue and trim up all the excess plastic. 
The kit comes with a bunch of white sticks for architectural detail. I glue onto the top of the door frame for structure. Now just glue it in place. Do the same thing for this three pane white window. Glue that to the top of the left wall. Also included are these four six pane windows. Take two of them and glue them to the opening of the wall that we just added the doors to. You can glue them on open or closed. With the last two window pieces, I'll create a front door. First, cut off one side of one window and glue those two pieces together. While that dries, grab a super jumbo craft stick. These are one inch wide. Cut out two one three fourths inch segments. Glue them long sides together to create this panel. Then glue the window on top of this panel. Add some coffee stirs for structure and paneling detail. Once that's done, I paint the entire thing a dark brown for a uniform look. Slip that into the door frame that we cut. Let's install the music box next. Take it out of its box and position the music box onto the wall with the hose. Turn all the screws in tightly. Then spin on a handle and give it a turn. Spill out the second bag with all the wooden pieces. The kit gives you these white pieces to create this armoire for dishware, but I'm going to use them to make a fireplace instead. For that, grab these four pieces. On the largest one, draw a 2 inch by 1.5 inch rectangle. Fill that in with black acrylic paint. Add a smaller rectangle to each side and a bigger rectangle on top. Cut out a 1.5 by 2 inch rectangle from clear plastic packaging. Glue it to the top of this black area. The kit also comes with these thin white carved strips for trim detail. Add them around the black rectangle as the border. Position the fireplace right over the music box. Then take this last rectangle and put it underneath the fireplace to act as the hearth. No Parisian living space is complete without something gold, so let's make that next. Inside a Ziploc bag with fabric, there is this gold frame with beautiful detail. There is also this piece of cardstock. From the cardstock, cut out a rectangle. Make sure it fits perfectly behind the frame. For the look of a mirror, I take some aluminum tape with sticky backing. Add that onto the cardstock and position it into the frame. How beautiful is this mirror? Add that right on top of the fireplace. While we have the fabric bag open, let's make some curtains for the big door. Grab the sheer white tool. I cut it in half with a rotary cutter. For the curtain rod, I take the skewer and cut out a four and a half inch segment. Paint that with metallic gold acrylic paint. Once that's dry, wrap the top section of the fabric over the curtain rod. I use no sew fabric glue to hold it together, but you can always use a needle and thread. Do this for each curtain panel. Then slip a panel back on and push it all to one side. Slip the other panel on and slide it to the other side. I use fabric glue again to hold the ruffles in place so they don't move. Then glue the rod to the wall above the door frame with wood glue. Pull the curtains tall downward and glue them to the floor underneath. I love this drapery look. For some additional architectural detail, I cut two 3 inch lengths of coffee stirs and two 2 inch sections. Glue them onto the wall next to the fireplace into a rectangular shape. This will act as wall molding. Add a smaller rectangle inside of it. Then paint that trim detail the same color as the wall. We'll be doing a lot of molding in this loft. These four pieces were meant for the bottom of the armoire. Glue the three small rectangles on top of the block and we have a simple cabinet. Add this in the foyer next to the front door. There is also this rectangular frame that I glued onto the wall. Next, I'll make a rug for this living room. Take the blue striped fabric and fold it in half with fabric glue. Trim up all the messy edges. This rotary cutter makes that job super easy. Place that rug diagonally in the living room. For the living room furniture, spill out the last Ziploc bag with wooden pieces. You'll need these for the sectional couch. For upholstery, grab the cream color canvas and the felt. Take the main L shape and glue it to the felt. Trim off the excess. Cut an even smaller piece of felt and glue it to the top for extra cushioning. 
Glue this piece fell side down on top of the canvas fabric. Trim off the excess leaving about a 1 inch seam allowance on each side. Cut a small snip on all the corners to prevent the fabric from buckling. Pull all the fabric up and glue it down with fabric glue. Then glue on all the wooden white pieces for the sides and the back. To clean up the look, cut a half inch wide strip of canvas. Fold in the raw edges and glue them down. Glue that all around the cushioning in the front. This adds such a nice effect to the seat. Then add on the final wooden pieces. Every couch needs a pillow, so cut out a 1 inch by 2 inch rectangle of canvas. Add glue around half the edges leaving a small gap on one side. Fold the rectangle in half and add glue around the edges to prevent any fraying. Once that's dry, fill the pillowcase inside out. Take some of that stuffing that comes with the kit and fill the pillowcase. Add more glue and close the opening by folding the edges inward. Add that onto the couch. These little legs are meant for a nightstand, but I'll add them to the bottom of this couch for some extra height. To complete the living room set, we need a coffee table. They're made of these pieces and the only change I made was to paint the top of it a dark brown. Assemble it using the simple instructions. How cute is this set? Add the couch and the coffee table on top of the rug in the living room. Now we can move on to the second floor. This panel is the ceiling on the first floor and the ground on the second. Before we glue inside the house, let's first make a chandelier for the first floor. The landing kit contains bulbs and a battery pack. It also has these little trinkets which we'll put to the side for now. There are a total of 5 bulbs. Let me show you how this will work. The battery pack uses 2 AAA batteries so make sure you have those on hand. Flip the switch on and attach the wires. Red to white and gray to black. How pretty is this yellow light? For the chandelier itself, we'll need this flower bead, these round beads, and this metal one. Slip a light bulb onto the flower bead and then add on a metal one. Then add on the round beads. Super easy. Loop the bulb wires through the ceiling panel. Then push them into the groove on the other side. I use a thin coffee stir and epoxy to keep them in place. Now you can glue this floor into the dollhouse creating a loft. Just like we did for the ground floor, install hardwood in a herringbone pattern. You'll notice that I leave the center area open because it'll be covered by a bed. Clean up the edges with coffee stirs to hide the gaps. For the bed, all you need are these three pieces and it's super easy to assemble. The only change I made was to paint the headboard a dark brown to match the rest of the house. Add on a rectangle of felt and this texture fabric for the bedding. Glue on these two posts on each side of the headboard for more detail. Add the bed into the bedroom and glue the bedding down for a drapey look. For the pillow, I just fold over a small piece of felt and cover it in canvas fabric. This is a much easier technique for creating pillows. But for some extra safety on the loft, let's make some railings. I cut two 4 and 3 4 inch segments and three 3 4 inch segments. Assemble them into this ladder shape. I made another rectangle that's quite a bit smaller at 2.5 by 1 and a quarter inches. Glue the long rectangle to the front of the room and the small one on the right side. The kit comes with these pieces for a staircase. However, it looks a bit bulky so I'm going to make a ladder instead. Take a skewer and cut out a 5 and a quarter inch length. Make two of these. For the steps, I just use some leftover 1 inch segments of coffee stir that I have from the flooring. Glue them onto one skewer spacing them half an inch apart. Add on the other side. Once the ladder is dry, position it on the right hand side behind the couch. These are the two roof pieces that are included. The only change I made was to paint the interior side white. Then just glue them to the top of the dollhouse with some wood glue. Also glue on the big window pane on the left side roof. Next, I'm going to make a much more intricate chandelier for the bedroom. For that, I grab the wires from bag D and unravel it to expose the white wire. Cut out 5 3 inch lengths. Also take a round clear bead from the greenery bag. Loop the bead over the wires leaving a 1 inch section at the top. Fold those wires downward. And then fold the long wires in the bottom upward. Take a light bulb and loop the wires through the bead from the long wire side. I use my needle nose pliers to bend the short wires outward into a loop. 
this is what you're looking for. Spell the remaining beads from bag D. Take a round B and loop that through the bulb wires. Add a metallic floral bee on top of that and a few more clear round beads. Looking pretty good. Let's finish it up. Fold each long wire inward and back around. Pretend you're making a cursive D with a little tail. Loop a small round metallic bee onto each end. Finally, add a metallic floral bee upside down on top of each one. Because we're going for a Parisian style, I'm going to add some metallic gold acrylic paint all over the chandelier. To install it in the center of the room, I first pull the wires through the tiny hole at the back wall. Then I use some E6000 epoxy glue to hold the chandelier in place. While we're here, I take some more of those white trim pieces and add them to the roof line for a clean look. Let's finish up the bedroom. For a nightstand, I grab these two rectangles and this wooden circle. Glue the two rectangles together to form a T-shape. For the circle, drew a small hole into one side. Paint the circle white and the base brown. Glue them together to form a simple nightstand. For a lamp on top of the nightstand, I'm going to make a lantern. You'll need these six pieces. First, string a light bulb through one of the rectangular bases. Then add the detailed side walls on carefully. Add the remaining rectangular piece on top. For a final touch, I take this little golden bead and glue it to the top of the lantern. Pull the wire through from the top of the nightstand and glue the lantern on. Then pull the wires through the back wall in the bedroom and position the table in place. Let's move back down to the first floor for some finishing details. I add molding by the front door for more trim detail. Also add on this white rectangular piece above the door. Paint the trim to match the wall and add a white trim piece by the back wall on the right. While that dries, let's work on the exterior garden. The first thing I do is paint the ground a dark brown to simulate dirt. Then grab the fake grass from the kit and cut out some 3 quarter inch strips. Glue to the left side of the exterior by the white wall. I also add a patch of grass by the door and on the bottom right corner. Also included is this palm tree. I just cut off the extra plastic on the bottom with some shears. Then glue to the left corner by the back door. I also glue on this little bush of leaves. For the greenery bag, take out this paper foliage. Glue them on the exterior walls. For a more realistic look, I take some dark brown acrylic paint and darken up the tree trunk. I also add on some various shades of green on the leaves and the grass. To finish up the exterior, add on the fencing. Spill out all the white fence pieces. I first glue on the long rectangles against all the exposed sides and then add on the intricate fence pieces. And don't forget these adorable posts. With more of the plastic greenery and some beads, I create some simple planters. Add this one to the table in the foyer. With a wooden planter shape bee and these pretty floral bulbs, create another planter. I place this one on the floor. This third planter goes on the floor in the bedroom. A beautiful feature of many Parisian homes is the vast collection of books. We'll make a few here. Cut out these images from a template that's provided. Fold the pages back and forth and fold the covers over the pages. Glue them down and you have some pretty books. These two go onto the bed. Remember the charm that we took out of the lighting kit bag? Cut off the loop at the top with some metal shears and you have a pretty Eiffel Tower sculpture. Glue that to the nightstand next to the lantern. Next, I take this trim piece and glue it above the bed to act as a simple bookshelf. Add on several more books on top of it. There was also this red telephone that came in the lighting kit. I painted gray with some nail polish for a more neutral look. Add on a number image from the template and it's done. Add it to the table in the foyer. Also add a book right next to it. Add a final planter to the loft upstairs and we're ready to move on to lighting. Turn your dollhouse around to the back. I pull all the white wires together into a bundle and all the gray wires together. You'll end up with these two bundles. The negative white one and the positive gray one. Take your battery pack and connect the black wire to the gray bundle and the red wire to the white bundle. Positive to negative. Flip the switch on, and look how beautiful that is. I love the effect of lighting acid this house. That's it guys, this Parisian loft is all done. I hope this video gives you an idea of how you can customize a kit, but keep it the same style. With a few simple changes, it looks very different from the image on the box. I hope you liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and make sure to subscribe for more. I'll see you next time. Bye.